CIA documents reveal George Klein claimed Germany had three functioning UFOs by World War II. The mystery of unidentified flying objects, UFOs, has been a topic of discussion for decades, while sightings being reported by people from all over the world, and these UFOs can fly at speeds exceeding Mach 15 and Mach 20. Can you imagine? 20 times the speed of sound, which is much faster than the fastest plane ever built by humans, the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird. It has a top speed of Mach 3.3 which is nothing in comparison to these flying saucers. The technology behind these UFOs has left people wondering where they came from. However, in the last few days, the topic of UFOs and extraterrestrial beings has gained popularity after the Chinese spy balloon was shot down in U.S. airspace. It's not known where the first UFO was spotted, but they had grabbed the world's attention before World War II ended. The uh, Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, is no stranger to investigations into unidentified flying objects, UFOs, and the recent release of a document has raised eyebrows and sparked new debates. The CIA's electronic reading room under the Freedom of Information Act, FOIA, is stuffed with the, to the gills with strange documents, many of which demonstrate the agency's efforts to keep tabs on other nations' technical developments especially in the years after World War II. The document in question tells us the story of George Klein, a well-known German engineer, and his experiences with flying saucers, and his claims about their technology. The document quotes from the interview George Klein gave to a German newspaper, in which he describes his work on flying saucers between 1941 and 1945. George Klein said, though many people believe the flying saucers to be a post-war development, they were actually in the planning stage in German aircraft factories as early as 1941. George Klein claimed to be in the ministry of Albert Speer, who was the Nazi Party's Minister of Armaments and Ammunition in 1942. He further revealed that Albert Speer also witnessed the first test flight of a flying saucer in Prague, on February 14, 1945. As per the report, it was stated that the flying saucer was able to achieve an altitude of 12,400 meters and a speed of 2,200 kilometers per hour. The flying saucer was able to do all this in just three minutes. Still, the Germans were planning to make it faster and engineer it in a such a way that the flying saucer would reach a speed of 4,000 kilometers per hour. George Klein stated that the only difficulty the Germans faced in the construction of the flying saucer was the shortage of materials used to build it. However, he further stated that this problem was also solved by the end of 1945. George Klein revealed that the Germans had already built three test saucers by 1944. It's also speculated that these were the same Foo Fighters that American pilots reported encountering. The document details extraordinary properties of three otherworldly disks. The first of these enigmatic machines was a disk-shaped craft possessing a cabin nestled within its sleek metallic form. This magnificent vehicle was forged within the very same factories that birthed the, the infamous V-2 rockets, boasted an impressive diameter of 42 meters. The second saucer was a true marvel of design, taking on a ring-like shape with its elevated sides towering in the air and a spherical cockpit nestled in the center of its mysterious form. Both designs were capable of rising to the heavens with an effortless glaze and landing delicately in the tightest of spaces, akin to a feather floating in the breeze. It was a performance that rivaled that of the most agile of helicopters, yet with an otherworldly flair that defied explanation. When Germany was on the verge of losing the war, engineers at the Prague facility were instructed to destroy all the flying saucers, the technology related to them, and even the tiniest bits of the papers that had information about these flying saucers. It was done so that the Soviet forces could not take possession of this technology, as fate would have it, the engineers at the Might factories in Breslau were not alerted in a timely manner, 
and the result was the Soviets swooped in to seize their valuable materials. The plans and highly skilled personnel were quickly whisked away under heavy protection, even as a designer of the infamous Ju-87 dive bomber, he would later go on to design and produce the formidable MiG-13 and 15 for the Soviet Union. George Klein also had a very strong opinion that the UFOs that are spotted at present are built with the same German technical principles and could give great competition to jet-propelled propelled engines. George Klein went on to say that building civilian flying saucers capable of transporting 30 to 40 people at a speed of up to 4,000 kilometers per hour was entirely feasible. Nevertheless, he noted that the massive quantity of raw materials required to make them did not justify their creation for the sole purpose of carrying civilian passengers. He said that the Italian ex expert Giuseppe Belluso, with whom Klein has been in touch for a while, agreed with him. After years of investigation, noted aviation writer Nick Cook concluded in 2002 that the Nazis were experiencing with a kind of science that was and still is kept hidden from the rest of the world. In light of the fact that Operation Paperclip relocated a number of high-profile German scientists in the United States, one wonders what the U.S. may have gained. Even though they have been partly censored and cannot conceal the fact that the U.K. military was interested in capturing UFO technology or what they coyly refer to as novel weapon technology and the files reveal they were desperate to capture this technology wherever it came from before the Russians or the Chinese got hold of it first although this was in 1997 Russia was still regarded as the undefeated enemy with the weapons program regarded as a threat to the West. Italian researcher Renato Vesco argued that Germans had developed anti-gravity disc-shaped and tubular craft were built and tested near the end of the Second World War, which he argued was a popular explanation of Foo Fighters. These concepts, he maintained, were developed by the Americans and Soviets and led directly to flying saucers. According to journalist Christopher Sharp, there was a strange UFO that crashed in Italy in the 1930s. The UFO and its crew were acquired by the United States military and eventually transported back to the United States after the end of World War II. The bodies that were said to have been found after the UFO crash before Roswell were found in 1933 in Lombardy, Italy, when Benito Mussolini was in power. Mussolini's office had papers about how he tried to hide the truth about the crash. These papers show that he tried to keep the witnesses quiet and the craft hidden. It was done with the objective uh, of studying the technology of the craft and under the direction of radio pioneer Guillermo Marconi, Italy's top engineers and scientists convened to investigate the vessel. There was at first no agreement on where the item had come from. Some suspected Germany because of the victim's looks. Nevertheless, the craft's origin was listed as unknown in the Italian records suggesting that more investigation was needed. Nevertheless, there was a twist. Being a good friend of Pope Pius XII, Mussolini revealed the mysterious craft to him, the Catholic Pope. But later, when Mussolini allied with Adolf Hitler's Third Reich, Pope, the Pope was apprehensive about the craft and somehow leaked information about it to the United States. The craft was apparently taken to the United States after the war and is still there to this day. Could Mussolini have given Germany access to UFO technology prior to World War II, leading to the reverse engineering of an Italian UFO and the creation of three German flying saucers? If so, then the process of reverse engineering has been going on since the 1930s. And what are your thoughts about this? This is by Kostub Chodari on Infinity Explorers. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box 